Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new year, 2022. And in this video, I'm hoping to get this steering clutch bevel shaft assembly put back in. Goes right in there. If this is your first time watching, this here is my D4 project. And if you look in the video description, there's a playlist there with whatever video this is. I mean, this is like number 26, 27 out of 5,000 probably. Let's take one last long look to appreciate this thing and all its beauty before it goes back in. If you recall, I did replace these clutch discs. I replaced the bearing in here. There's another, the main bearings in here I replaced in the cup and then the seal. So that's basically every wearable part is uh, replaced on here. And I also painted it obviously, but if I've done it right, I will never see this again for the rest of my natural life. So I'll probably be seeing it after about two hours worth of usage. You can always hope though. I also replaced the uh, brake linings on both pads or uh, both bands. So those are brand new. And uh, these drums were actually in very good condition. So I didn't have to worry about those. All right, so there's gonna be two difficult parts about getting this back in, probably. The f and they're both centered around this thing. So these on either side are what the bearings ride inside. And then this yellow locking thing here is what sets the preload and the backlash on the uh, pinion gear. So there's two issues. One is sealing this thing up right, and I'll show you in a second. And then the second is setting the, uh, the backlash. I got a spare one here so I can kind of demonstrate. But basically there's, a, there's an oil hole here, which lines up with that hole down there. And then there's a notch here, which there's a little uh, key on here. This is the bearing cap. So that lines up in there and it allows it to slide back and forth because what you end up doing is you put it in here and then you have those giant yellow nuts that you screw or loosen, tighten or loosen to uh, set the, the proper backlash. Once it's set, then you have this that goes right in here and it locks, it locks in the teeth of that nut. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a little bit of a fun thing. This one, this is, this is just a flinger so it gets oil off that ring gear, but it also has a lock right there. This tab sticking out, oh, uh oh, this key is completely flush. What, are you kidding me? Is there like a curse on this thing? Oh boy, so I can see what happened here, I think. So you see that notch right there? That is from this, getting smashed in there or worn down or I'm not quite sure. But I think what was happening, this is that nut I was talking about for adjusting. And I bet you what was happening, well, let me show you. I, I, I'm pretty sure I know what happened. So I think you're, you're supposed to have these like somewhat tight, but not too tight because this needs to slide back and forth when you uh, tighten that nut. And I bet you what happened is they had that nut on there and they were using a hammer and a chisel to uh, tighten or loosen. And it, you know, one, one hit too hard and this wasn't tight enough and it spun it just a little bit. And then they tightened it down and locked it in right there. So... That's kind of unfortunate. It looks like there's just, this was just drilled and welded. So I'm wondering if I can get, uh, just grind this weld off and replace it. I'll give that a shot. I don't want to order a new one. It's going to take a few days and I'm kind of getting, getting hundred dollar build to death on this thing right now. So the other difficult thing is going to be properly sealing this, this area from the steering clutch area. This is like the transmission fluids in here. Uh, so this, this cover goes over the top. You cannot use RTV because it'll sit too low. It needs something to sit on. I think originally it was cork and then like a wool gasket along this, this flange here. And then there's these channels in here on both sides that ride up against right here. I, don't, I forget what those are made out of. The cat does have a replacement part number that's an updated seal, but I think what I can do is, here's the original, this is like the original cork on here, and it rides in this channel on either side. But uh, this is uh, 3 16 inch thick Buna rubber. It's the same width, it's a little bit thicker, but it does compress quite easily. So I think I can just run a strip all the way around. It fits in this channel really well. And then that'll seal this part and then I can take the same stuff and put it, if you see it fits right here, 
in here. And then when you put the cover back on, it actually lines up uh, very well with where the height it's supposed to be at. So I think that's gonna work. Then the only other thing is in this channel and on the back, I have uh, a little bit thicker rubber because this stuff's a little bit too thin. For and then for areas like this, where this seal needs to meet that seal, uh, I did a fair amount of research for people that were using this kind of stuff was like to make their own O-rings. And the glue they had was basically, is just super glue. Um, I've glued this piece here and it's, it's really, really strong. Works really great for this rubber, it really bonds it. And it's oil resistant. So that should work pretty well. Uh, so I should have a nice one continuous bond. I don't think I'm gonna use any RTV on this. I mean, I could come in here and I could squirt some RTV, which I think they did originally, just, but it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna make a mess. RTV does not bond to this stuff. So anyway, that's the plan for sealant. And uh, let's get to it. Okay, I got the kind of approximate location of where the pin should be. So let's start digging in here. I can't seem to find it in here. I think it's going to be easier just to drill this thing all the way through. And then I could probably just stick a bolt through and weld it from the top. Well, I tried drilling the pin from the other side, but it's, it's hardened and you can't get into it. But this is not. So I drilled down here just to see how deep it is. And it's, it's that deep in. So I'm going to take a bigger bit now and get this hole bigger, and then I should be able to shoot out the pin from the other side, hopefully. Yep, that's working, it's going in. There it goes. Okay, it came out. Now this is definitely hardened steel because I could not drill through it. Um, I was gonna use a bolt, but I think what I'm gonna do, since this is sitting right here, is this is the jump, a Junk Harbor Freight punch here, is, look at that, it's almost perfect. So I need to find what length to cut it to here. And then I can't weld to this, obviously, since it's hardened. So what I'm gonna do is I'll cut it so it's just a little bit below the surface of right here. And then I can just weld over the top of it so to hold it in place. And that should be just about as good as original. I will have to sacrifice this, but I think this set me back about $3 back in the day. So, I mean, the whole set, not just this one. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for your service, Harbor Freight Punch. Seems really low. Okay, so we'll call that good for now until I get it welded. And then I will, so I just need a weld in here, fill this hole in. I don't want any pockets in there because it'll end up pushing back out again. pretty but uh, over here on this side of things you can see that when this goes in here it's just a wee bit too long so we'll just use guess and check here and slowly grind this down till it's good enough and then I uh, spray some quick uh, oil resistant primer over that so it doesn't rust and I think we're good it fits in here Slides right in, and it's definitely not too long. It does get really dusty in this barn, so I'm gonna do one last uh, clean, really good cleaning job of the surfaces. It's nice that I'm not using RTV, so I don't need to like de-oil or degrease anything too much, but. One other thing I gotta do, you'll notice that this stud's missing. It's right here, it came out when I took the uh, cover off, so 
I'm going to pull all these studs real quick and uh, lock tight them back in so they don't come out again. I'm going to use the strong stuff for these, I'd prefer they not come out. Pre-cut this seal here. Give myself a little bit of slack so I can trim it down later and make it straight. I think I'm also going to run some grease on the inside of the seal. And that's because when this goes in here, it's going to be sliding back and forth as I set the preload and the backlash and it's just going to want to pop that seal out of there. All right, here we go. It's important not to get this thing in backwards or else you're going to have five reverse gears and one forward gear. Yeah, I think these need to go, need to tuck in there. Like that. And you get these bearing caps somewhat lined up so the holes on the bottom. Trying to get the gear lined up. There's something that's bound up in here. I'm not quite sure what's going on here yet. I don't want to get my fingers stuck in there. The ring gear is just not quite setting in there quite right. And it's too heavy to move around. So I'm gonna take a little bit of tension off here. See if I can shimmy it in. Okay, I think I got it here. My issue was this lock nut over here was still on a little bit too much. But yeah, okay, it's in there. All right, it's in. So the problem I was having is these, these nuts were too tight on here and uh, it just wasn't allowing it to get in there. So you can see it, these things rotated quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to turn these I'm really glad I, glad I greased these because they were kind of sticking out a little bit and I was able to just quickly snug them in there really easily. Got a package from a subscriber here. Oh, Charlie, you have an admirer. Someone knows Charlie because she is a dog that likes a good blanket. Perfect. Oh, custom embroidery, fancy. Thank you guys. In that last video, I had a couple uh, eagle-eyed viewers say that there was something that they saw in, in this case. And I checked the timestamp and it looked like it to me too, but the camera can play tricks on you. So let's get in here a little bit better. I haven't really looked in here since. I mean, there's that fluid on the bottom. Am I seeing? There's like a little bump in the casting. Maybe that's what it was reflecting off of. I don't see anything in here though. I'm gonna have to lift this up just a tiny bit because those uh, bearing cages are not rotating all the way. Gotta get them kind of lined up. That's right. All right, I got the uh, bolts in. I'm gonna just, you just need wanna snug this thing down, not tighten it, because the, these still need to slide in here. So I'm gonna get it not too tight. All right, everything's in here and uh, I think ready to tighten. I'm gonna mark this uh, cap in relation to the cage, just so I don't have a repeat of whatever happened last time. 
I'm going to be hitting on here with a, a, a hammer to tighten it. I don't have the special wrench. So when you hit it, there's a chance that this might move as well. I mean, I'm assuming that's what happened before. Now the manual just says they have a special wrench, but they just say tighten. They don't say to what or how tight. All right, it's a little tight in here for my gauge, but uh, basically if there's too much backlash, you loosen this one and tighten this. And I got some uh, vice grips on here to kind of tighten it and loosen it. And right now it's at, uh, you're supposed to do it off the pinion gear. So right now it's about 40. So I'm gonna loosen this one. Gonna tighten this one. And now we're at, Uh, right around 30. And I've already smashed my finger once here between this stud and the wrench, so we're off to a great start. I think we're at like, I think we're at like about, z we're at zero now, so that was a little too much. A little bit, it's about seven. So the spec is seven to nine. I picked the guy's brain that I bought that engine from, and he's been building these things for you know, 30, 40 years. And he told me you want a favor on the loose side. So we're going to shoot right for around nine. Even, even more than that is okay. He said, you, whatever you do, you do not want them tight because they'll just rip themselves apart. All right. Once again, I can't really show the gauge here. You can probably see the needle, but it's uh, right at nine. Um, I've got everything. It might maybe, maybe eight to nine. I've got everything these nuts pretty tight on here. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna check it on a couple other spots on that pinion gear, and then we might have to adjust a little bit more. This is point one. Yeah, we're right about eight here. Maybe a little bit more, maybe nine. All right, we're at position four here and we got nine so i think we're good on the backlash back to one here let me just double check one again one more time all right i got some uh, prussian blue here so let's check the wear pattern on these teeth all right i'm just following what the manual says to do so i use the um i use the input shaft to turn it just so it'd be under load both forward and backward so this is kind of what they want is let's see if we can get a good view here See that, that mark right there? That's the original wear spot, and that's right where the uh, pinion gear is contacting. And then you're supposed to see about 50% of the way up the gear from the toe out to the heel right here is supposed to be uh, marked. So that's pretty much what it looks like. Um, so I'm just trying to get a good angle here. So all the gears look like they're about that. I think that gear contact, I mean, you're not really supposed to mess with the gear contact unless you change the shaft or the pinion gear. And I haven't, I, I kept the original spacers in. So this is just kind of a sanity check to make sure everything looks good. This is a little bit different than doing it in a car, but I'm just following what the manual tells you to do. I think part of that is just because of it's, you know, it's not exactly a car and also spends about half its time going backwards and half its time going forward. So it's just, uh, just done differently. Well, it's the next evening here and I kind of had a step away last night because something was not sitting right with me. I need some time to think about it. So basically the issue I had was as I was, I got everything tightened down, right? And I got the, everything adjusted. And as, as I was turning it, like halfway through the turn, um, this ring gear would be harder to turn than the other half. So normally that would be something was bent or screwed up, but the backlash was not changing anywhere around this. So that tells me that the gear was not getting bound up. Something else was, I wasn't sure if like the bearing caps were messed up. Um, so after some time here, I spent on here, I found, I remember that there was these studs sticking through the case that were adjustable and I'll show you on the bottom. You can see them here. So here's one right here. It's got like an adjusting nut on it and there's one over there. So I backed those out about half of a turn. And as soon as I did that, they completely freed up this gear. I think the purpose of those is they push up against the uh, brake band to make sure it doesn't flop around in here. I'm guessing those were really, really throwing me for a loop there. Um, but now everything is spinning nice. All right, now that it's torqued down, here's the final backlash check. Ooh, 
been moved. We're at about seven, which is a little bit much. Let me try somewhere else. Yeah, it's, it's down in the six or seven range now. So um, I'm gonna loosen these up and then just give these a couple spins and we'll give that another shot. But it's uh, definitely tightened up a little bit, which is not good. So we wanna loosen that side, right? Well, it's showing about 10 right now, but I'm gonna retighten it and see, uh, see if that retightens it back up. Because it definitely tightened up about two, two thousandths once I tighten these bearing caps down. Yeah, we're right at nine again. So, and I noticed when I was tightening these down, um, they were pushing back down. So I think the seal kind of pushes them back out and throws the backlash off but it's back where it was, where it's supposed to be at right around nine. It's a big relief that that uh, issue with it not turning right was something so simple. I just figured I was gonna be uh, taking this thing back out to rebuild it. Get these brakes in before I forget. And I remember this one was difficult. You gotta like pull the band, and the camera's on the band, so you're gonna get some jiggles. You gotta pull the band down and get get that started, and then pull it over. Maybe, maybe not. Shot it with something. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay, I got this cotter pin in and this one in. It's uh, really hard to get in there and get that cotter pin bent out, so I couldn't really film it. But now when you push in the brake pedal, you can see there's quite a bit of adjustment because I'm pushing it all the way and it's not even tightening it. So I think the way you adjust it is you just turn this guy, tighten it up. So if it's anything like car brakes, you just want to get it, uh, so it's just almost rubbing. And then that's your good spot. Now I can feel resistance there when I push. And it's definitely contacting, but I think, I don't know. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty loose still, so. How about these brake pedals though? They've gotten some use. You can see through that one. Get these ends as flush as possible. It's a little bit more. Oh, very close. That's a pretty good length right now. I'm just gonna hold it for a minute. Okay. So I'm still debating on if I wanna just, just to be safe to put some RTV here, but I just don't think it's gonna do any good. So we'll try it without it. I mean, worst case is it's gonna leak a little bit, but you know, I'm not going to be using this thing hundreds of hours at a time. Um, and, you know, I'd like to know if it works. This is kind of like a hybrid. I, I looked at a lot of people were doing on like the antique Caterpillar website. People were doing a lot of stuff like this. Originally, for this channel, I was going to use, I have other cord sizes here. So this is like a square. And uh, this is a different size square. But these are way less compressible. Than this, than this uh, rectangle stuff I've been using. So even though this is a little bit too wide for going in here, it compresses so well that I think you could just shove it in there and it'll be good. Well, to be honest here, I'm really not happy with the way this is going. Um, so when I push this cover down, there's too much friction and this is like, this seal is sliding up. There's just too much seal in this uh, slot here and it's not, it's, it's, there's not enough space for it to compress. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. And then I think I'm gonna take that same glue and glue it in so it doesn't move once I put it in. Because when I had both these seals in, this one's out right now, it, would not, it wasn't even going down all the way. There was too much stuff in the, in the way. All right, this is much better. This is ugly, but I've cut this down and it fits much better in here. There's a little bit of flush, so it should compress a little bit right there. 
In here, I'm gonna put, take some uh, Permatex number three, which works on rubber, and I'm gonna put it in these corners, just because there's not a lot of contact surface where this, because you notice there's a, there's a little bit of a flange here, it doesn't go right over that. So I'm just gonna coat these corners in that. Uh, these are sealed up in here. So everything should be sealed once I uh, put the Permatex here and let it, let it sit for a second. There we go. All right, let's see what kind of compression we can get here. Looking really good so far. Everything's compressed. So you get in here, this gasket right here is pushing out, which is what I want to see. And this seal on the top, I can't move it. So one thing I probably should have done, I probably should have put some Permatex in these, this corner as well, but I think it's, it's so compressed, it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque this thing down. I would say that I probably should have just gotten the uh, replacement cat part number, but you know, this wasn't too bad. I, it took a little bit of futzing to get it, you know, set up right, but I think, I think this is gonna seal okay. We'll find out, won't we? All right, so I only torqued this down to like 30 foot pounds, um, just because it's just smashing the rubber at this point. But if you look over here, it has just got a great compression on this rubber all the way around. And uh, in there you can't see it, but it's, it's in there. All the way around, it looks really good. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. If you're doubting me as far as gluing this stuff, so this has been sitting in diesel for two weeks. This is a, a piece I showed at the beginning that I had glued together. Let's see how much, how much force it takes to rip it apart. Here we go, let's see how much force this takes. It's not ripping. Let's try ripping it with this. Ah. Yeah, I don't know guys. I think this glue is gonna work. All right, next step is gonna be putting these bolts back in. I got uh, new lock washers and I'll be using Loctite on this. If you remember when I took these apart, um, sub several of these bolts were backed out, which is not a good thing. All right, I got all the bolts in, so now I'm gonna start at the last one I did and go back around and torque everything. So these are half inch coarse, so I'm gonna go 80 foot pounds. And I'll, uh, I'll mark them as I go. I think I am done here. The last thing I need to do is check on those studs that come through the bottom to figure out how you're supposed to adjust those. I still haven't put, I need to put the bar in with the control for the, the handle and all that. I'm going to do that next video. Next video is going to be putting the uh, rebuilt top back on and kind of figuring out how that goes back together since it was all broken when I first took it apart. But uh, this was a, a pretty big step that's done. Fairly confident it's not going to leak. We'll find out. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be. It felt like I did a lot, but uh, when I think back, there was only really like three or four steps to get this thing back in. There was a lot of thinking on my part and kind of experimentation. But uh, next week we'll be doing the top transmission cover, and uh, once that's done, then it's all straight on to engine stuff. Kind of my plan here, let me show you, is once I get the engine on, I'm going to just make up some quick plates to cover this back up. I'm going to drive it around for a while before I put that winch on. Also, the winch is broken, so I'm gonna have to fix that. I, I, I can't just have this sitting here with an engine that's all running and not try it out at least a little bit. You know, if this keeps up, a few more, a couple, maybe like one or two more months and this thing's gonna be up and, and driving around in a, maybe a preliminary fashion, but uh, we'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll be back real soon.